Welcome to Counter Punch with Trevor Loudon, the show that details the rapidly unfolding world communist revolution. Uh, please like the show, share the show, and subscribe on Epoch TV. Today, I want to talk about Ukraine. I want to talk about the Russian propaganda offensive around Ukraine. Russian propaganda has been with us since the days of the Bolshevik Revolution, but it's gone into overdrive in the last few weeks in preparation for Russia's war on Ukraine, basically trying to turn Western public opinion to at least neutrality, if not actually cheering Russia on. And it is working to a large degree. For many years, Russians used the traditional Communist parties to spread their propaganda. The Communist Party USA, Communist Party of Britain, Australia, France, Germany, etc. They're still doing that. They're still using the left as they've always done. But now, in recent years, they also started using the right. They started using conservatives and libertarians and social conservatives and Christians to spread their propaganda. In the old days, it was all about communism. Now it is about neutralizing what the people who should be opponents of Russia, of communism, into turning them into fans or at least neutral to, to what Putin and, and his cohorts are doing in Ukraine. Now it's basically all about justifying the invasion um, and neutralizing opposition to that invasion. This has been coming through for some years. It came through the alt-right movement. It came through the libertarian movement, some elements of the Ron Paul movement, and some prominent social conservative elements in the United States. Now it has seeped into um, some elements of the Republican Party, which is a very, very serious thing, and will be used by the Democrats against conservatives in the next election. I can guarantee you that. There's a number of themes that we're hearing all the time. The first one is Putin is a Christian. Putin is on our side. He's against the new world order. He is trying to save Europe and, and America from the Muslim hordes, from the radical gays, from the abortionists, the radical left, etc. He's a champion of Christianity and family values. Another one is that we shouldn't confront Putin because if we do, if we confront Russia, that will drive them into the arms of China. And anyway, Ukraine is a pawn of the globalists. It's in bed with George Soros and the New World Order, where Putin is doing us a favor by invading Ukraine and shutting everything down there. And they have bioweapons labs there. And Putin is trying to save us from a big pandemic. We should be so grateful to Putin for this. And Ukraine, of course, is also a Nazi country. It's full of Nazis. And we should be welcoming the end of these Nazis, just like we welcomed the end of the Nazis in World War II. And after all, all of this is NATO's fault. This is America's fault and NATO's fault for pushing at the borders of Russia, of wanting to protect Ukraine and countries neighboring Russia from Russian aggression. It's our fault. It's NATO's fault for poking the bear and the bear has finally fought back. But ultimately, the only way to stop this is to disband NATO. So Russia has no longer anything to worry about. Now, all of this is pure Russian propaganda. There is little bits of truth in some of these things. There are elements there that all propaganda takes a grain of truth. But ultimately, all these propaganda points are designed to weaken Western support for Ukraine, divide Ukraine inside itself, and justify a brutal aggression against a neighboring sovereign state. Much of this is presented on the internet as secret knowledge. There's all these websites out there that do these great analyses and they look at the bioweapons labs and they look at Zelensky going to a World Economic Forum meeting and they draw all, all these conclusions and they add a little bit of QAnon stuff in there and, and people are swallowing it like you wouldn't believe. And it's all coming from the computers of Russian intelligence in Moscow and Leningrad and other places. I want to deal with first couple of points first and maybe some of the others in later episodes. How did millions of Western Christians, politicians and social conservatives come to believe that Putin is a man of God, a Christian? How is this possible? A KGB killer is now a man of God, a man who is secretly baptized and is really on our side. Well, the Russian intelligence services realized a long time ago that to dominate the West, they would need to control not just the left, but also the right. They would need to appeal to conservatives and Christians and at least neutralize them, at least get them 
so they would accept Russia as an equal partner on the world stage, not as a malevolent superpower that it actually is. They've done this before, you know, during World War II, you know, the early Bolsheviks closed down all the Orthodox churches in Russia and murdered priests and suppressed the church. But during World War II, when the Nazis invaded, they opened the churches. They relished Christianity because they could use Christians as a patriotic force against the Nazis. They could use the Christian churches to build support for the communist regime against the Nazis. And ever since that time, the Russian KGB has completely controlled the Russian Orthodox Church. Russians know this. It's no secret. The leaders of the church are KGB agents, but people still go to church because they still, um, they still believe in, you know, they, they're still Christians. It's much like Catholics still go to church in the West, but they know that Pope Francis is a leftist. He's a Marxist, but they're still part of the church. So Putin has made hay with this. He, he gets photographed all the time with Russian Orthodox Church officials. He's made a good relationship with Pope Francis. He's, he appears at baptisms. He appears at religious ceremonies. He's been known to wear a crucifix. He's talked about his Christian past and hinted at a possible early baptism. This is all designed to basically suck in what they KGB believes are naive and gullible Western Christians. In 1995, two Moscow sociology professors, Anatoly Antonov and Viktor Medkov, started an organization with prominent American social conservatives called the World Congress of Families. And it was based on family values and ending abortion and battling the gay agenda. And it was designed to bring social conservatives and Christians all around the world into the influence of the Russian founders of this organization. They held conferences in Georgia. Friends of mine attended. They held conferences in, in Europe. They've had sent delegations to the United States to meet with prominent um, social conservative and Christian organizations here. They made a major effort through people like Alexei Komov and others to convince the American and European right that Putin is with them against the left. Here is a little clip from a Republican Senate, U.S. Senate candidate in Delaware. See what she says about Putin. Also, you know, Russia is uh, a Christian nationalist nation. They're actually Orthodox Christian. I'm mm. Russian Orthodox. So, you know, I actually support Putin's right to protect his people and always put his people first, but also protect their Christian values. But here's what Putin really thinks of Christianity. Вот коммунистическая идеология, она очень сродни христианству на самом деле. Свобода, братство, равенство, это справедливость, это же все заложено в Священном Писании. Это все там есть. А кодекс строителей коммунизма, это сублимация, это просто такая примитивная выдержка из, из Библии. Ничего там нового не придумали. Вот смотрите, Ленина положили в мавзолей. Но чем это отличается от мощей света? So why does Putin equate Christianity with communism? Perhaps it's because Putin is a communist. Remember that Putin grew up as a communist. He was in the party. He rose to high rank in the KGB. He took over the Russian intelligence services. That is a communist culture. You cannot belong to those institutions unless you've been a fully indoctrinated communist, completely trustworthy your entire life. This is his world view.